I'm gonna, I was just about, just about to kick off actually, because I think we've probably got everybody that's coming. Um, I, uh, apologies from Sarah today, unfortunately she's poorly and um, she can't make it. So I'm gonna do some content work with everybody as that's my area of expertise. So hopefully that's useful. As I said just now, even if you do that fairly regularly, um, the luxury of a bit of time to focus in on it is probably not a bad thing. And because we're a little bit low in numbers, we can be quite collaborative. So do ask questions and do, um, share what your thinking is throughout and then uh, it might just help to, to sort of stimulate somebody else's thinking so I've asked Jim for everybody to have a, either an A4 blank sheet or a, a notebook spread where um, they can just do a bit of more kind of like mind mapping really so we're just trying to get down on paper as much um, uh, sort of inspiration as we can um, so let's just start, for those of you who've not met me, I'll just give you a quick background on who I am and what I do. So I'm a, a content writer. I've run my own business, Mountain Pop Creations, for it'll be eight years old next month, actually. So um, and that's been uh, supporting small businesses um, and more recently, specifically coaches and people focused um, service businesses with their content. So anything from blogging to website copy uh, and anything in between ebooks um, and uh, LinkedIn posts and bits and bobs like that. So my world is content. So I don't really do much without one ear thinking one part of my brain and one ear listening out for for kind of you know could that be a good piece of content so it's about getting that radar really up and running and tuned in and I know a lot of people will sit down and kind of hit a brick wall with posting whether it's LinkedIn or whether it's writing a blog coming up with ideas so I thought it might be useful if we did a bit of a, a brainstorming exercise and I can give you some some ideas and you can be sort of jotting down the things that are relevant to you I've also got a couple of really good tools to share with you which um, I'll do um, during the the process and we'll um, have a look at those as well on a shared screen so you can see how they can work and help you come up with uh, things like blog titles and, and things like that so hopefully this is all useful but do um you know it's your session so do chip in and steer me um i'm happy to talk about anything content related so any questions um or queries i'm more than happy to take those um as and when you they pop into your head so um what we're going to start with is asking you on your blank space blank sheet of paper to just jot down, sort of in the middle section of it, um, your areas of expertise. So it could be that you look at them, at them as income streams. So for example, for me, I could write blogging, I could write LinkedIn, I could write um, website copy. So whatever the sort of services or the products that you sell, um, if you can just write those down, and, and obviously the thinking here is that they are your sort of expert areas that you may well talk about when you're when you're writing content so if you get those down um, as many or as few as they are it doesn't matter and then from there we'll start to map out some of the um, ideas for content that come from those What I will do as we go is I'll ask people to just share their ideas. And even though our businesses are different, it might help to generate that sort of inspiration, which it often does. And then from those, just go sort of around. I'm thinking of, you know, a mind map typically is sort of, you know, spreads itself out gradually on the page, doesn't it? So think about whether they break down into other areas. So, for example, if I'm talking about blogging um, there are different types of blogs I could write so there's a thought leadership blog or there's um, okay Fiona no problem um, there's a thought leadership blog or there's a, um, a shorter sort of topic blog but there's also things like um, you know in terms of writing skills I could could break down their grammar and things like that so what what are the sorts of things that come into those services that you offer and then what sort of what's the next layer down the next level of detail if you like so try to have each of those top areas of expertise with some little lines coming out from them with other elements within that that come there does anybody want to ask a question or share anything just one thought all that effort fiona put in to join us and then she had to go oh how's your luck I don't anyway, know sorry, yeah. sorry, back to focus. Sorry. Yeah, no, you're about. absolutely right, though. It was, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, bless her. Okay. Oh, I know. Hopefully, it's nothing serious. Right. 
I think I was just saying being able to see other angles from the big picture. I think that's what I was just writing. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so I mean, exactly, it's different. It, is, it could be different sort of subtopics and angles on, yeah, on what, what you do. And then somewhere else on your sheet, um, I want you to write down your ideal clients. So, for example, with me, as I've said, it's coaches, it's recruiters, it's HR consultants. Do you have a particular sector that you niche in? Do you have particular people, types of people that you want to attract? Um, and, you know, it doesn't have to be... Um, set in stone it could be that actually at the moment you're quite interested in attracting I don't know the legal profession or you could be particularly interested in high net worth individuals so it depends what uh, your growth area is um, but but put them all down so just give them all a separate little space on the on the page um, and these are your your sort of they were well, they your audience so um, they should definitely be informing what you write about so often with content um, and we're all guilty of it. We post and, and talk and blog about ourselves. And um, sometimes that is useful because it gives people the background. It builds our profile and our credibility. But it's really important that at least, I would say, actually, almost two thirds of the time. So for every three posts, two of them should be about your client. You know, they should they should look at it and be going, oh, my God, that's me. I definitely have that challenge or I definitely have that wondering. And, and because that is you then showing them that you understand them and that you are there to solve their challenge. That makes that link in their mind in terms of, of their potential interest in doing business with you. So um, that's why we're writing those, those sort of ideal clients down. And then... Coming off of those in sort of uh, whatever decorative level of decorative design you uh, you are <laughs> drawn to, I imagine Alison's mind map would be absolutely mind blowing because she's such a designer. <laughs> um, oh, maybe not. Okay, Alison, we'll let you off. <laughs> it's a bit of a busman's holiday. Um, but coming out from those clients, I'd like you to just write down any sort of typical um, pain points, typical challenges that they have. Um, and, and, you know, it might be, for example, um, Vicky, I know you're a coach. I don't know whether you're, if you do leadership coaching, it might be that you've written a C-suite or senior executives down. And it might be that they're, it's, it's you know, that, um, the, the, those promotion, you know, um, imposter syndrome type things. It could be, um, yeah, lots of different things. But try and put down a couple of, of Again, it could be that you want to brainstorm the stuff that you really want to focus in on. So you might choose just to put down a couple of, of kind of pain points, if you like. If there are certain things at the moment that you're really keen to, to push in on. Um, and that could be um, environmental things that are out there for us all at the moment. So obviously the, the kind of recession, the return to work thing. I don't know how many of those are relevant um, to your business, but they should all appear and we will cover off some of those external factors in a second does anyone want to share what they've got so far i know it will be it will be personal to your business but i think it's nice to see people's thinking it might jog a, a thought for someone jim go go for it okay, so, so i started off in the middle because um the the business that i'm thinking of is, um, is in financial services. So my, my company is called Circadian FX. Mm -hmm. And we do international payments for people doing things overseas, uh, buying or selling overseas. And so my skill set was um, opinions. It's difficult to blow your own trumpet, but I, I'm, I'm getting there. Opinion, should, knowledge, yeah. support, and access that they wouldn't necessarily otherwise get. Um, okay. to those um, opinions, that knowledge and that support, that service. Um, and the skill sets were my writing and my chat, my relationship building skills, my ability to understand what people are doing and to find a solution for them. So that, that led to the ideal clients who are either people or companies, obviously, because everyone is either a person or a company. So narrowing that down a little bit more people doing stuff internationally, buying or selling properties, expat workers maybe, 
people buying stuff if you're buying a motorbike for a hundred thousand if you're that way inclined you might need to um to buy it overseas so um, and companies is actually the same buying or selling anything abroad um and then where's the pain points from that i got a bit blunt here i said one of the pain is dealing with idiots um which if you've ever tried to do anything with a bank you might have some sympathy with um poor rates so purely financial benefit although i'm obviously conscious that it's not all about a race to the bottom it's not just about the pricing but obviously if you're gonna if you're gonna charge people more you need to have a real reason for that actually i cut people's costs and i give them a better service and i the other pain point is their lack of confidence in their own timing so if they look at they look at a rate they go well, i don't know if that's a good rate or a bad rate or an indifferent rate somebody's told me it's a good rate so it might be a good rate but i don't know if it is or not so they need to have someone that's a trusted confidant that they can feel comfortable with discussing this stuff and then make their decision to the best of their ability and my ability brilliant yeah so that's yeah very good um, and that, you raise a really no, no, don't worry don't, don't you know whatever uh <laughs> Whatever does the job is fine. I, I think you you raise a really good point there, and I'd like everyone to just revisit what they've written and make sure that they've done the same. And that is to bring the person into this. If you've been very business like and very kind of transactional in what you've written down, just go back through and make sure that you are blowing your own trumpet because that is what this is about. And I know everybody struggles with that. However, you need to just reframe it and think to yourself you are an expert in your field you are advising your audience when you share knowledge it's useful for them so you're not this isn't about boasting this is about sharing so it's just a reframe that you know i know it's absolutely common that people don't want to to appear to be showing off um but it's all about the tone and the way we phrase things so yeah brilliant thank you for sharing that jim that's really good um, what we uh, need to do next is have a think about, um, so we've obviously got those, those clients, that, that audience that we're, that we're looking at, and then there's a sort of a balancer to that, which is, um, in my mind anyway, which is sort of influencers. So that's a bit of a, uh, a, bit of a, a buzzy word, but what I mean by that is who's out there that you really respect, who, who or what, because it could be a publication, um, it could be uh, a think tank, it could, or it could be an individual. Um, but who do you kind of use as a great resource? You know, and and actually, aside from industry specific, it could actually be one of these, you know, gurus in in leadership. It could be, you know, your Brené Browns or your um, Jim Robinsons or whatever the, you know. So there's lots and lots of them out there. Who who do you want to keep on your content radar? So who should go down as, as somebody that, or, or for example, Marketing Week is a good one for those of us in the creative industry or the marketing industry. There's lots, I'm sure, but well, what sorts of things, people and things do you consult regularly? So this again, don't forget, this is going to be something that hopefully you look back on when you get to that blank sheet moment and you're trying to create some a content plan perhaps. And from this, all of your resources should be captured here. So, so you, oh yeah, I forgot, I haven't looked at them for, for a little while. You know, what, what, are they, what are they saying? And again, when we produce content, it's nice to have a ratio um, of sort of our own gen, sort of ge generated um, sort of bespoke stuff that might talk about our own experiences or, or, or our sort of case study material, if you like. But it's also then good to have some third party um, evidencing and, and, and sort of sharing going on because that can be used cleverly to corroborate what we're saying. So we give ourselves cred greater credibility by doing that. So who are the people that, you know, inform your thinking, if you like, have a, a quick think about some of those. I guess on, on top of that, um, Emma, you, you might find that if you're creating some sort of traffic backwards and forwards with those influencers if they pick up on that and they say nice to see jim agreeing with me or something you know whatever yeah. then your network then goes boom doesn't it yes and many of them do i'm always quite pleasantly surprised there's a guy bob berg i don't know if you've heard of bob berg he co-wrote um oh it's gone out of my head what's it called um 
oh, really famous business book. How ridiculous. I'll Google it in a minute. Um, anyway, he he always responds to uh, a tag on LinkedIn. And it's amazing because the guy, you know, he's a really famous guy. He does loads of speaking now. That's his kind of main thing. Um, I'm going to yeah. kick myself. Let's just find the name of his book. But, you know, like you say, then yes, absolutely. Um, it does It does then get your reach up sort of thing. The Go-Giver, I've read it like five times. It's a really good, it's, par it's a parable. If you haven't read it, seek it out. The Go-Giver, it's all about um, turning the concept of, um, of sort of business on its head in a way. And the more you give, the more you gain. Um, so yeah, he's, that's a brilliant book. He wrote it with a, a guy called, uh, I think it's John David Mann. Yeah, John David Mann. And, uh, but Bob Berg is very much the more prolific um, networker, if you like, and uh, based in the States. And he, yeah, I have to say, you know, he, he definitely, I mean, I'm actually linked in with him. He's accepted a connection request. And, and you know, if I ever mention his book, which I do from time to time, because it's one of my favourite business books, um, he will always reply, which is great. It's nice to kind of get that. And so that, yes, exactly that. I mean, that's a sort of a, a nice side thing, really. But who are the people that you are, you know, that you've learned your lessons from, if you like, and, and therefore, you know, you'd like to put on there. So that's great. And then following on from that, um, let's think about the sort of um, environmental factors, as I've said. So are there things out there? Um, so, for example, Jim, you've already talked about the, that you're in financial services. So clearly the economy um, is going to be is going to be a factor in in what you do, um, and so there's you know it's a it's a general and it's a fairly high level thing, and you might not want to get into you know there's that you know our, our list of what is it religion politics sex I don't know whatever other things you could put on that list these days it's difficult there's probably quite a lot on there but what things would you not probably get into but things where you might still want them on your radar you know because actually it might have a bearing so whilst you don't want to be posting anything perhaps too controversial or maybe you do some people definitely have that approach but uh, yeah so so what things are out there what factors and obviously things like you know the mental health agenda is a good one for those of us who are involved in uh, in the coaching world or um it might be um I mean, Alison, your design, so it might be the art world, you know, the arts are always a good draw. So it's that, where can you kind of get inspiration and what things actually that, you know, may well be outside your sphere of control, but what, what things impact on what you, what you do? So Jonathan, for you, I think, did you said you're a management consultant? I mean, it's probably quite a long list of things that, <laughs> that yeah, can I, impact. I, um, it's, this has been quite useful for me because, um, my ideal clients are managing directors, firstly, uh, through one of the services. So if I just briefly say my two key services are uh, consultancy for managing directors and their organisations to help them improve their sales. Mm -hmm. But I'm also a coach and a mentor for um, smaller business owners who can't afford the, the day rate, the consultancy day rate. So um, there's different uh avatars if you like of yeah. ideal clients so an md a senior exec who might need support because i'm doing a coaching and mentoring course in um mentoring senior execs but what i noticed when you started talking about influencers there is nobody that comes to mind with regards to mentoring um mm. so there's perhaps an opportunity there but there are plenty of people on sales um too numerous to mention yeah um, yeah and as far as environmental factors are concerned, I, I wrote a post yesterday, actually, about um, in, inflation, because and this may link in with what Jim does. Um, there are broadly speaking out there from my prospects and existing clients, two schools of thought. There are those who see the dark clouds of uh, recession coming and are sitting on whatever cash or assets that they've got. And there are others who say, sod it, I'm going to invest um, and my article basically was about how can you invest in the things that are likely to generate a good return for you, i.e. your people, which mm -hmm. obviously then links into hopefully some sales training or investment in making them the best version of themselves out in the field. Brilliant. Yeah, so there you go. So you can, you know, and you, because you've got those two avatars, you may well have different sort of arms coming off of those topics those different audiences because exactly that they'll be in different places in terms of what they're trying to achieve um 
Yes, yeah, that's that's a it's a good one actually, and 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 again, it's it's how how um, controversial is the wrong word really, but how sort of edgy do you want to be in your content? You know, how much do you want to challenge what what's out there? I've just listened to the news um, at ten o'clock today, and it said that there's been a actually June was a period of growth for the UK, tiny tiny amount, but that means that you know we question the recession thing, and should we all kind of just go for it anyway so it's an interesting it's an interesting debate actually and, and and sometimes when you get onto those topics and you can put in a little bit of your own kind of business angle um again to go back to Jim's point the, the reach and the discussion because it's engagement that is so so valuable on these posts when you're on social media on LinkedIn and and that can just go exponential then you know because it is it is of interest to everybody and and everyone has an opinion so that so that's your kind of external so you're starting to now build you know you're at the center of this world that you are um building around um now there's some softer stuff obviously um which you may or may not um subscribe to um but you know i think that people do buy people and so it is important every now and again as i've said already to push about a bit of your personality out there so um, one of the sorts of things that we can do that through is um, our sort of good causes or seasonal things. So things that just pop, that, that just crop up through life. So, you know, um, as a service business, we're a little bit less. Um, I think most are we all service businesses. I believe we are, aren't we? On here, um, I, we're a little bit less kind of. Um, you know, if you look at the, the retail industry, you know, that you, you, you can see when they all get fired up, you know, it's kind of Christmas, you know, Valentine's, Easter, there'll be several throughout the year. And that's when their their sort of campaigns kick off and everybody's kind of on a on a theme on their on their content. So we're not quite so beholden to that stuff. And maybe that's a good thing, because I think sometimes you just get lost in the noise of, the, of that topic. But but there may well be seasonal things um certainly with your financial guys in you know, the budgets and things like that 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 actually you do want to just have on that radar so is there anything for you that comes up in terms of uh and it could be events actually i mean thinking alison are there any big design expos or um things that you can uh that you can tap into and mention you know so it's that sort of thing it's the stuff that that plays to your agenda um but is sort of yeah is is a part of a bigger calendar if you like so have a think about anything that's seasonal good causes and, and that can cross over into whatever's personal to you you might have certain charities that you like to support and they, if they've got an event running then you might choose to um to uh kind of share that And then very close to that, which we can do at the same time, are your hobbies and interests. So things that come into your life completely separately from work, but they help to build a richer picture of who you are. And obviously, you know, one of the things I think we talk about um, when we're when we're self-employed running our own businesses is, is why, the why. So often, you know, that's part of that hobbies and interests section. You know, why do we... Why do we kind of niche where we do or why do we why do we pick the profession that we did? So have a think about those softer aspects of, of what makes you who you are. And, you know, Jim highlighted it a bit earlier when he talked about the fact that he wants to build relationships and he gives people that advice. So he's a trusted advisor. And that's a huge thing. You know, trust um, is massive in uh, in business. In fact, I don't know um, whether many of you are aware of a company in the states called Edelman so they're a big consultancy firm they've they've studied trust for I think it's about 20 odd years it might even be 30 years I can't remember now but they do a, an annual report called the Edelman Trust Barometer and that is uh, E-D-E-L-M-A-N is the spelling and they have uh, I think it comes out in the beginning part of the year and then they do like a sort of executive summary recap in about may type time and they are um well their report is is just incredible to have to look at actually at the moment so basically what they do is they survey globally and they report back on what the the importance of trust from in in every institution so when it, it can be government non-government organizations industry business and and you know they they look across that whole um sort of cross section of society and as you can probably guess um the trust 
of governments and NGOs and big committees is on the slide, has been for years, but is, is now at an all-time low. The media is the other big section, and, and again, they have really lost the trust of the people. And now it's business leaders who are the last bastion of trust. It's incredible. So basically, they the, the business leaders are now almost expected uh, to step up in societal terms. So that's, you know, a little bit of this um, ESG agenda, isn't it? This, uh, you know, sort of being responsible for the, the, the community in which you operate or, and for the people who you um, serve. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good point in the chat there from Tisha. And it's, yeah, well, I mean, the press have not done themselves any favours, I think, over certainly in the UK, um, for me personally, it's personal opinion. But, you know, I think that, you know, COVID was uh, clearly was a serious thing, but it was it was absolute fear mongering that went on a lot of the time and you know you need the facts but you don't need the the fear that comes with it and I think that wherever there's fear mongering there's a sense of control and yeah so there's a lot and obviously you know they get they do get caught up in the in the political stuff as well which has not been great and you can understand why the world over governments are being questioned right now um leaders are being questioned so um, but it's really interesting read, um, particularly if you do um, work with C-suite level uh, clients, because actually these are the people that, you know, are, are sort of now being kind of, you know, when it comes to things like climate change, when it comes to things like, um, I mean, showing up and honesty and authenticity, it's all about the business leaders. So sorry, that's a digression. It's one of my <laughs> one of my topics, but actually it's very relevant. It is very, very relevant because we're all in business and trust is a big thing. And I think sometimes that's what we bring when we talk about these softer elements, they are softer, but they're also really, really fundamentally important to people. And they are they link in with values. And actually, that's the next the next thing. Actually, do you have corporate values? Do you have values attached to your business? Um, if not, you may. And most I think most smaller businesses will just go on their own personal values. But whether they're personal, whether they're linked to your business, jot down your values on your sheet because um again stories that are told around how people do a great job of those values how other businesses kind of um walk the talk are quite powerful ways to um quite powerful things to include in your content so there might be a you know a big well-known brand that does a fabulous job of something that you aspire to or that you believe you you also follow um, and you can highlight them as as ambassadors for that as leaders in that field and you know often if you haven't gone down the road of corporate values the, the chances are it's it's the fundamental stuff that matters to us all so the authenticity the relationships um you know knowledge sharing and things like that can be can be one of those Are you saying, um, Emma, that it's helpful to try and think, if you're a small business, to try and think of a big brand that you can kind of align yourself with a bit and say, well, their, yeah. their principles are similar to ours and therefore... Yeah, I think so. I mean, obviously, you've always got to be careful with aligning yourself too closely in that you're not in control of their actions and their next action, you know. But I think there's definitely, you know, if, if for example, um, uh, the, the, the climate um agenda is 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 high on your list then you know you've got companies like um there's an outdoor company isn't there patagonia they're called they do clothing for um you know mountaineers and walkers and whatever and they i'm pretty sure it's them they've got the most incredible and and possibly north face although they're a bit more consumer level but yeah some of these companies are doing the most incredible kind of reuse recycling i think it's patagonia that have got um a kind of lifetime repair thing that goes on with their clothes so it you know there's lots of examples of that type of thing and you'll get you'll get companies who um you know have decided to really do some great things with their people it's obviously something that just this just needs to be that sanity check when you align yourself as a smaller business to make sure that you know there's they're not greenwashing as they call it in the environment uh, sort of sector but you know they are they are genuinely um doing things but yeah i absolutely think you know if there are brands out there that you you want to kind of um 
call out as being, you know, being champions, then why not? Yeah. It's a, a cliche, I guess. Yeah, exactly. I have to be company action. Trying to piggyback off innocent drinks would just be a bit boring, wouldn't it? Because everyone yeah. is. Yeah, and, and and actually, in some respects, you know, these guys get enough coverage. You don't need to be, you don't need to be, you know, helping them. But but I think it's 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 when you bring something in that's a great idea, and, and even if you were to say, you know, we've been inspired by this, and so we've done this, you know, it might be that more that angle. But certainly. Um, the middleweight companies you know it doesn't need to be the massive um massive brands it could be it could be um sort of someone in a in a you know the middle kind of middleweight size companies but i do i do you know i think that at the end of the day it's about those influencers again isn't it who is it that you're you you know would look at and aspire to but yeah just to you know, a check through kind of, you know, um, if you wanted to do a, a piece of content, just checking that you sort of, you know, what they're saying and maybe glass, glass door is always a good one, isn't it? See what the employees are saying about them and stuff, make sure there's nothing untoward on there. Um, but yes, making sure that they are walking that talk. Yeah, I, I, I just sort of add in if I can, but um, of course, yeah. and actually that made me think of, because one of the things I one of my sort of values is the whole kind of flexible working because obviously that's kind of why I set up doing what I do because yeah. I want to work around the kids so I'm very much you know happy and I love working with kind of uh men and women but it's generally more often it's the mums um who are trying to work around the family and so actually there's you know there's a um, mother pucker who does the whole flex appeal and she's she, doing yeah. a massive, trying to push you know because obviously it was brilliant everyone could work from home but now lots of companies are starting to pull everyone back in again, you know, and they're saying, you know, they've got to be in at least minimum four days and stuff like that, which, you mm. know, interestingly, a lot of it, everyone's going back on everything they did say. No, that's right. Mother Pucker, she's like, she's really getting some good coverage at the moment. I've seen a mm. few people who are saying that they um, they follow her. Um, mm. Yeah, it's interesting stuff. So, yes, exactly that. It's 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 people that are that are championing a cause that you're keen on. Or that aligns well with your values. So yeah, good point. Thank you, Alison. Anybody want to uh, share anything that they've got or ask any questions? Um, just a, a, a useful tip um, for those that don't know about it. If you've got um, a company or a topic or something specific that you want to keep abreast of, I use um, Google Alerts. Um, this is particularly useful for either things like competitors or prospects. So you can set up a, an alert. Uh, you know, there's sorts of people who you're trying to develop a long term relationship with, but quite often don't return the calls that often. Um, so uh, the post office used to run an advertisement that said, I saw this and thought of you. Google alerts give you basically a modern day equivalent of doing that. So if you set up a Google alert for a prospect, and then whenever some news comes through from them, then you can say, oh, I saw that you bought a new factory or is this time to discuss expansion plans or whatever else it may be. And it just shows that you've got your finger on the pulse courtesy of Google. It costs nothing, by the way. That's a brilliant tip, actually, Jonathan. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. It is a brilliant tip and it, and it takes your content to a whole new level because in you know as part of your whole content plan you may choose to be very very targeted in some of it and it may be that some of the stuff you send perhaps on that that sort of almost that email campaign level you know may well be that granular you know you may be picking up stories that are relevant to a certain number or even just one of your con contacts but you're you're then really almost picking out their own funnel to push them down with the content that you that you send them and and then obviously making the link back to what you do so yeah that's that's brilliant good point and actually these mind maps and in your in your subsequent planning can obviously go off down those routes um quite nicely uh, once you've collated all of that that interest um and yes i mean trade we, we kind of mentioned trade press didn't we or trade articles but yeah anything obviously that that is a, a marketplace or a sector that you are you know very focused on is is also relevant on here so any any um websites i guess or or uh, yeah i mean google alerts is good the, the, the only thing you have to be a bit careful with the google alerts is work spend some time working on your search term because it, it, i i struggle um with i have struggled with it in the past because some of the stuff i'm looking for is, is too generic the words are too generic 
So, but you can use the, the Boolean search terms and the different things that apply elsewhere in the same way to, to narrow it down. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so talking of tools then, um, I wanted to share a few with you. I'm gonna um, share my screen for the first one. So I'm just gonna get that up so that uh, when I, she says, Peter says no. So this is um, a bit about the sort of next step really. Um, there's a website um, called answerthepublic.com. Uh, and um, it's a great way. Right, I'm going to share my screen. If you just let me know, you can see that. Yeah. A man dressed up as a robot. So what we've got here is answer the public. Now I'm going to type in um, the writing and click on search. And then um, as you scroll down, it, it basically gives you a map of questions that are being asked um, on the search engines and so obviously from a blogging perspective this is great because I can look at this and say oh okay so what are people asking now it's obviously not always going to be relevant because a lot of this actually if I look at it is you know how do I become a, a content writer I don't really want to blog on that area that's not what I'm looking for business in however I could click for example on why content writing is important so all of these areas on here are clickable so if I click on why content writing is important hopefully you can now see a google page is that that visible to you yeah okay so then you obviously what you then get is is a is a kind of um a search on that question so so if for example i'm blogging about that i can immediately come up with a whole host of potential references or sort of evidencing that i can use in my blog and obviously i need to check through and see who it is that's writing them and and check their credibility but actually that's a quite a nice way of um of, of finding some some good inputs there going back to to um answer the public you as you carry on scrolling down it gets more granular so um you can uh you know there's content writing for websites so you've got your your um prepositions here um so you can pick something that feels relevant um and then carrying on down there's some comparisons so for example here there's content writing versus digital marketing content writing versus blogging so you can see how i'm actually drilling down here into lots of different ideas for potential blogs or posts or discussion points even you know um and it, it's really quite it can be really quite interesting i mean the, obviously again there's a, they just then show you it in a different format at the bottom there but it's, it's obviously only as good as what you're putting into it but actually that's you know it's 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 use, it's a useful resource to uh to have a bit of a brainstorm with so that's answerthepublic.com um there's then uh I'm going to go, actually, let me stop sharing and pull this up on a sec, but there's another resource, another tool, which is excellent, which is uh, around headline writing, because, of course, one of the things that um, we really kind of need to get right when we write content is our headlines, because this is the clickability aspect. So I'm just going to share my screen again. Um, so this website is called uh, headlines.coschedule.com. Um, so CoSchedule are a, a content scheduling um, business, but they run, they have a headline studio in there. So if I was to type in here, um, let's say I put, uh, what is the difference? between blogging and content writing when I prepared earlier. And then I just get this out of the way. I click on analyze and it brings up um, a score after it's had a little advertise at me. Just see if I can get rid of that. Okay, it brings up a score. So this score is 53. It's out of 100. So it's not a great score. It's not very high. You can tell by the color actually, sort of red, amber, green um, thing. So it's telling me a bit further down the, the screen, the zoom controls are all in the way of my actual, actual thing control. It tells me here that I've got a lot of common words. It tells me that I don't have 
uh, any many uncommon words, power words are zero, emotional words. So it, it sort of analyzes the language you're using. So let's say at that point, I think, okay, right, so I need to tighten this up a bit. So I'll say, um, let's give it a number. We know people like numbers. Three differences between blogging and content writing. Let's reanalyze and see what happens to the score. Okay, it's gone up. It's still in the amber section. It's not great. Um, you, it says here upgrade. You can upgrade and pay to get more information, but you don't need it. This is sufficient, um, in my opinion. So, okay, so three differences between blogging and content writing. So it's telling me there's still no, not much emotion, um, and there's no power words in there. So what if I instead said, um, change it over to um, three reasons blogging is better. This is a bit more emotive. It's got a decision in there for people. Now you can see the score shot up to 82. So you know that in doing this, you're going to appeal to more people um, by tweaking your headline around. And you can do that free of charge, um, I think, well, I've never I've never reached a, a, um, a capacity with it, to be honest. They haven't always had a paywall in. They do now. Um, so it's possible, of course, that, um, that that might change in the future. But for now, it's free. So you can see there, there's definitely some power, some emotion, some uncommon words, and some common words. So I've got a good balance, it would appear. It tells you at the top, actually, which are your power words. So better is a power word. It's like I said, you're getting that emotion in there. So that's a, a good example of, um, of that uh, particular tool, always useful to have. Um, and then finally, I just wanted to share another um, tool, which actually I can share my screen. So this is a, a sort of plugin, an add-on to Google that you can uh, implement if you want to, and it's called Keywords Everywhere. So if you search if you Google Keywords Everywhere, you'll get to the, um, the tool itself. And then if I show you my Google page, you'll see that it's got this kind of column here, which has a lot of information in it. And what this is, is this is, this is the extension that's working in Google, where whatever I search for at the top here, it brings up some stats for me, but it also, and I think more usefully, brings up related keywords, things that people also search for, so purpose of content writing. So in terms of trying to come up with sort of ideas related to a particular part of, of your content brainstorm, this is great because it might give you, might sort of just prompt your, your thinking um, to address a certain question. You've got uh, what do people search for? You've got long tail keywords here, which are obviously much better because they're much easier to rank for. So if you're if you have one of those as a title, for example, of a blog, then chances are that that may well um, get you some traffic. So that's keywords everywhere, which is a um, an extension to Google or can be set up as an extension to Google. You can just go in and use it. I think you don't have to have it on your Google search all the time. It can be. It's a bit of a busy page if you're not keen on that, but but it's useful to see. So hopefully that's some good some good tools. Good. All right. Well, link in with me if you're not already. I think the majority of you are. But if we're not, I'll I'll look you up if we're not. And. Uh, there's always lots of content um, advice being shared on my uh, LinkedIn post. So do do link up and uh, I'd love to, um, to see you all again, hopefully on another of these meetings.